It's officially June. So to discuss all things Pride this month, I had to bring in my friend, actor, musician, and host of the Gay Life Coach podcast, which can be found on the Odyssey app. Mr. Brian Faldudo, hello. Hello, Katie. It's good to see you. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. I wanted to talk to you about why LGBTQ representation in pop culture is still so important today. I think it's wildly important. I feel like uh, representation is how you see yourself, right? I think um, as an actor, I know that often when I'm acting, I'm trying to reflect an experience back to someone so that they can connect with it. And um, and that's how you sort of like touch them, right? And I feel like when I was younger, I was one of the few items in the media that was LGBTQ referencing. So, um, and that felt really isolating and there was a lot of pressure on like a young kid's uh, shoulders. So I feel like um, knowing that that's expanding and that we're also hitting like all the different corners of the LGBTQIA plus community is really important because even just outside of my story as a cis white gay man, there's so many stories that need to be heard because there's so many people who need to hear those stories so that they don't feel like they're alone, you know? Do you remember the first time that you saw a character in the LGBT community who resonated with you? I wanna say it was Kurt on Glee. There was a thing going around for a while where it was my picture next to his and people thought that he was me. Um, and I really? Said, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, it's not me. And I think Glee was so out there about it, which was cool too, right? Cause I feel like the, um, there was there was no like disguising it or anything. It was very just outspoken. Um, and people loved Glee. So I feel like that was a cool cultural moment, you know? For sure. And there's definitely been an increase in the amount of queer characters and storylines in film and TV in recent years. Are there any recently that have resonated with you more? I was a big fan of the prom. <laughs> I didn't to, get to watch that. Yeah, it was, a, it was good. You liked it. It was so good. And I'm also a huge fan of musicals. So uh, that was like a real, especially during the pandemic, when I think like a lot of entertainment options were limited. The prom, I think, did a really great job at sort of like bringing back the spirit of like the Broadway musical, um, but also incorporating, you know, needed storylines. Everyone can watch it and have a good time, but also learn something. As a country music artist, what does it mean to you to see other queer artists like Little Nas X or TJ Osborne, who recently just came out, find success in the genre? You know, it's a more traditional genre. So it's cool to see that I think it's evidence of the times changing that we do finally have some out and proud names like in that genre. Um, and then there's also just like so many like underground names and like a whole like um, queer country sort of like movement that's happening that's I think is really cool. Fancy Hagood is on the scene right now. Love him. And there's um, Paisley Fields is doing a lot of awesome stuff. Well, also Orville Peck is so amazing too, which is a little not so underground, but um, country music's all about storytelling. And I feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of queer stories that need to be told. So it's uh, it's a great genre for it, you know? Now, we, you kind of like touched on this at the beginning of the interview and you've written about this also about how it was really difficult to be known as the gay kid from School of Rock when you were young. But I'm also sure that like that character resonated for a lot of people. Like, do you find people reaching out to you to say that that character meant something to them? After that movie came out, I was labeled the gay kid from School of Rock for a really long time. And I was really like averse to that because mm -hmm. um, I was young and I didn't know what being gay was. And I just... Um, I, I heard negative things, you know, and it turns out yeah. it's a great part of who I am, right? So it's, um, but I think as I've grown older and I've started to embrace it, I feel like I'm putting that energy out. And so, yeah, a lot of people have come forth in recent years and been like, your character was for me what I needed. It was what I, I, I it was so cool to see a flamboyant, sassy, eccentric kid on screen. And so I guess any years of sort of me feeling confused or lost after that were really worth it, I think, because, um, it, yeah, I don't know. It was just like this, it was, you know, the starting line of a lot of years of LGBTQ representation, you know, back then there wasn't that much. So I'm, I'm honored to have been part of that. And I love hearing other people's stories and yeah. Well, since I have you, and since yeah. you are a certified life coach, <laughs> I'm going to give you the name of an LGBTQ character from a movie or a TV show. And you can tell me one piece of advice that you would give them? Simon from Love, Simon. Simon. Uh, Simon came out and wasn't, I think, um, I think the advice I would give to, to Simon is to um, really just sort of continue honoring the internal 
voice um, as compared to the external voices. Cause I feel like there was a lot of um, worrying about what other people might mm -hmm. think, right? And then I think once he found his mate, he started to like listen to uh, the inner voice. And so, yeah. This is one of my favorite characters of all time, but Eric in Sex Education. Oh my God, such a good show. Um, I don't know if Eric needs my advice, honestly. Um, <laughs> He's the best. I feel like he, his character gets hurt a lot, right? Like yeah. very emotion, wears his heart on his sleeve, very emotional. Um, I would say definitely keep that up, keep the emotions up, but maybe just um, focus a little bit more on what he can control and not like what he can't control. And what about David Rose from Schitt's Creek? David. David. <laughs> David. Uh, I feel like David Rose and I and life are in similar trajectories and that I feel like towards the end of the series, it was more about accepting some of the simpler things that life has to offer and, um, you know, being authentic and focusing on connection rather than, you know, indulgences and, um, and all these like, you know, like having a plethora of friends and material goods. Um, and so uh, less, less is, is more. more. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my advice for David. <laughs> what about Cam and Mitch from Modern Family? Well, they're like raising children. So I feel like they should give me advice. But um, <laughs> I feel like they are really good at um, navigating being queer amongst a large family, which I feel like a lot of people struggle with. So um, especially if like, uh, if the family has a lot of different viewpoints on the topic. So it's, um, uh, I actually think that they're that, that was a, that's a pretty iconic couple because it's so integrated in that family, you know. And Will from Will and Grace. I'll tell him what I tell myself sometimes when I feel like I I um, am having trouble navigating the dating world, which is loneliness is a sign that you are in desperate need of yourself. That is very good <laughs> advice. I love that. And then what about another iconic character, but Damien from Mean Girls? Damien's actually coming on my podcast this month. Um, Stop it. He is? He is. And we talk about growing up queer, <gasps> quote unquote, icons. He wrote this beautiful letter to Damien once he came out later in life. Um, and uh, it was, I thought it was really cool. It was just about how Damien was braver than the actor playing Damien because Damien was so out there and true to himself. I love that. I can't wait to listen to that. That's awesome. And then the last one, Titus from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. My advice would just be to keep going after it. He's very talented. He's a very, that voice is crazy. <laughs> awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming on this episode of Screenshots with us to talk about iconic gay characters. If you don't already subscribe to Brian's podcast on the Odyssey app, The Gay Life Coach, just absolutely do that. When is Damien going to be on? Later this month, you said? The, the fourth Friday of Pride Month, yes fourth Friday. Well, happy Pride Month and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Katie.